So just walking through this area we planted in 2018 and uh, have a little look at how some of our trees are doing. This is a beautiful area. You can see there's a really pretty little lake down there. And we planted, uh, we planted trees beside, if I can do this, planted trees at the base of existing burned trees, uh, hoping to pick up on um, some of the mycorrhizal fungi that might be in there. And um, also there's, there's some shade here from, from this tree. This is on the north side of this tree. And uh, there's the shade from this will will give you more moisture in the ground here. So the tree has a, a much better chance of doing well. And also uh, there's a lot of um, mid-season and sort of end-of-season frost in the IDF GK3, the interior Douglas fir dry cool number three variant. And um, and so the other thing we're looking for is, is to get some... Um, thermal benefit from these where the little bit of warmth that, that this tree will have absorbed during the day especially kind of in the fall will be felt by the by the uh, planted tree here sorry my my dog's going a little crazy for um for sticks and see that there's a tree whoops a tree at the base of every one of these some of them are looking like this one looks like it's uh, had a little bit of dieback here from frost but but basically if you have a Douglas fir in this condition, um, it's got fantastic buds everywhere. There's buds at the end of all the branches. Um, there's lots of foliage. I bet if we dug this up, we'd find the roots were really well developed. If you've got that kind of situation, that tree may take a few more years to um, to take off, but I would have no doubt that it's it's going to do that. Uh, once the once fir has its its roots established. Uh, it tends to do really well. Here's a another great example here. This tree is, I don't know, I would say almost 60 centimeters tall. And um, the, let's see if I can line this up to the lens. There we go. Uh, it's got really long needles. The buds are looking really good. I don't know if that's on, in focus or not, but that's, that's just a fine looking tree. And uh, really when we look through here, uh, you can see a whole bunch of larch over here. I'll just go over and show you, but we're going to just go over and look at some larch here. Larch has um, it's been moved up from uh, kind of the North Thompson, Salmon Arm area, uh, Okanagan. And the reason we're moving it up is because climate change is making it an appropriate species for this area now. And if we can see that... That is a just a beautiful tree. I mean, this this tree is. I don't know if I can even show that it's higher than my hand, so you could say it's about about seven feet tall, uh, much taller than the Douglas fir, and you can see that the base it's it's got a, a diameter at the base of I don't know three centimeters or something like that now, and if we look around here, you can see. I got my hand in here. You can see all of these larch are just looking amazing. They are just doing so well. And so uh, we expect larch to be a, a really important part of these forests. And another comment is that, you know, because we got in here in 2018 after the fire, uh, the the nutrient flush that you get from all the burnt plant matter, you know, a lot of that stuff goes up in the atmosphere, but some of it is retained on the ground. And so the trees actually have sort of like a fertilizer flush of nutrients in the immediate time after a fire. And this site definitely benefited from that. I'll just take a pan around here again. You can see how well all the, uh, all the larch are doing in here. And uh, they really stand out in the, in the distance. So, that's a look at this stand. This is a, this is a really pretty site here. Beautiful lake and uh, grasslands, lots of waterfowl out there. Thank you.